Uh, welcome to Preach Care, Preach with Rashad. We are the prophets in the episode, another sermon. Uh, no Rashad tonight, but I have two guests with me. You got Kevin, Kevo Kalir from the Bottom Line Podcast. What's going on, man? What's going on? What's going on? And you got Owen Watterson, man. What's going on? I ain't see you. It's, it's been a little minute. It's been a little it, it's, minute. It's been a little bit. You know, I didn't know Rashad wasn't going to be here. I'm a little upset because I was excited <laughs> to give him hell, like I, like I always do. But right. nonetheless, man, we're going to have a good time. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. So this, first of all, this NFL season has been crazy. NBA Finals, uh, game four is going on the way. Um, the Lakers in heat. I have, I have, I, I, I've got my money back. I, I won the Lakers. And, I got Lakers in six and in five as a, as a bet. They uh, Heat won. I'm happy Jim Butler had a historical game. Uh, do y'all, any of y'all had a Heat winning, tying the series up? I, I don't know, man. Bam's supposed to be coming back tonight, so – I haven't, even, I haven't even turned the game on yet, so I don't, I don't know if he started or not. But man, it's going, it's going to. I hope, hopefully, the series wrapped up next week. I look, you really don't like this basketball and football at the same time. This is the most uninterested I've ever been in the NBA Finals. Right, it, it's it, really it, strange, man. I, I don't like it at all. It's the, the rest of the bubble up until this point. The point felt fine. The series were great. It was competitive. But once we got to the finals, something just changed. I, I don't know. I, I think, I think it's the NFL season. I, th- I think that's. I think that played a part because, like, I'm more interested in who I'm playing in fantasy than watching the game. Um, fantasy yeah. has been a mess, too, man. With all these injuries going on, fantasy has been an absolute mess. I'm going to say so far I've been gracious to to draft good enough to – I didn't I have I didn't, a whole bench full of injuries. Yeah, that's, that's, that's sad to start off the season. <laughs> um, so, NFL season through, through the quarter of a season, four games already – we just want to talk about like what we learned so far, what we've been right about so far. Um, I, 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 I we'll start with the, the the news about the firing of Bill O'Brien, uh, the GM slash head coach, uh, and I may be the only one to die on this hill. Um, but to me, like even like after a uh, whole day after the news, the firing to me was warranted. But I think it was a panic move. I think it was a. I don't know what I'm doing. Move. Um, obviously, you don't have a GM, so you can't fire. He can't. He's not gonna fire himself. Uh, that's not gonna happen. And then it's like if you was gonna fire him because he's 0 4. So you, you, you're talking about playing the Super Bowl champions, Kansas City Chiefs. You're talking about the Ravens, who had the best record in football last season. And then you're talking about the Steelers, who got one of the nastiest defenses in the league. Plus, their quarterback is bad. This, this is not Duck Hodges, and this is not Mason Rudolph. This is Big Ben, a Hall of Famer. And then a toss-up game, I guess you could say, Minnesota versus Houston. So three games you're going to lose regardless. I don't think – did any of y'all have them winning, beating any of the top first three games? I didn't. I mean, what else can you say? They've lost a lot. They've lost a lot. And their offensive line – like when they came out against Kansas City in that first Thursday night game, um, they were getting quick passes off. Deshaun Watson was getting the ball out of his hands. And it worked for a little bit until – the Chiefs just started blitzing the hell out of him, and then Deshaun yeah. Watson can't do anything. Exactly. So it's kind of like, all right, if if you were gonna fire him, once the season was over and the schedule came out, you should have fired him then. Like, because if he, he's not gonna, he wasn't gonna go. He was not going to beat Kansas City, Baltimore, or Pittsburgh. The only game that was tossed up was the Minnesota game, and you know, with Minnesota, you know, being young and secondary, all that kind of stuff. I guess you kind of you expected to win the game. You was favored to win, um, you know, but you didn't. So. If that was what the case was, if you're going to fire him, you should have fired him after, I guess, quote unquote, blowing the lead to the Chiefs uh, in, in the, it was, it was that conference championship, not conference championship game, the uh, division round when it was up 21 0 to start the game. So I think, and I think Bill O'Brien gets a lot of like bad rep because, you know, I think the GM part, though he's not that good, I don't think he was that terrible. A lot of people always say he gave a lot of picks. I mean, but he got players back, like pro, pro football focus ranked. Tunsil, like top five tackle in the league. Um, I mean, we all we all know Brandon Cooks is. I mean, he has zero catches. I don't know what 
what they were trying to do against Minnesota. But uh, we we all know Brandon Cook's been throughout his whole career. I mean, he played with Breeze, Brady, golf, and he had good success everywhere. So getting him for a second round, that's not that's not bad. Um, I guess the only thing you could say is bad was trading Kalani for – I can't even remember what they got for Kalani. So I yeah. guess that's the that's the only bad nothing. one. But you know, that's that's the only bad one. I, I would say, I man, and trading D Hop, you, you didn't get a first round pick. Everybody was mad about that, but Arizona wasn't gonna trade that eighth pick. That's not that wasn't gonna happen. So that's that's unrealistic by fans to assume you'll get the eighth pick, maybe a next year first, but you know, you didn't get that. But I and I you know, I think um the only like all right, so Bill Bill, Bill O'Brien's a Bill uh a Patriots guy, Bill Bill Belichick love him. And he does exactly what Bill, um, what Bill does, like trade guys uh, instead of paying them. The only difference is he didn't have a Super Bowl. He didn't have Super Bowls, should I say? Like, so yeah. it's like when when Bill get rid of Chandler Jones, who is one of the best passers in the game, nobody bats an eye, even though he's having a all time since he left there. I mean, sacks after sack after sack seasons, all pros. Like it, it looked like a mistake, right? But because Patriots is so well coached, the uh, Bill as a GM is, is, is so great, he gets overlooked. You know, so if, if the I completely Patriots, forgot about that. Right. So and I'm saying nobody. You know, we don't we don't we don't care that uh, what's the linebacker uh, Jamie Collins like he nobody cares about him in Detroit when he went to Cleveland. Patriots he was cheap went off get paid bye bye. But like if Bill does it, it's a problem. And I still don't think like like I said, you can fire him if you. I mean, I get it. Um, you know, you I think he was 52 and 48 as a head coach. Um, which which is which was when his during his time was 11th all time. You're talking about being behind Dallas, Philly, Minnesota, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Green Bay. Like these are all like great franchises for the most part. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I I guess you can be mad at him because uh, he not win a Super Bowl because he don't have he didn't have Brady well, well, and all these guys. This question is where does he go now? I mean, he, he, I think he get a coordinator job. I think. I think if McDaniel's, well, you would think the Patriots want to uh, take someone to go a different way than the Patriots guy, but yeah. like if let's say if rumors right now and McDaniel's go there, I mean I, I don't see why Bill wouldn't want him back. I mean he coached the office before Justin McDaniel's did. I mean seamless fit. Uh, so you you probably got to think anywhere a Patriots guy is at. Um, Josh McDaniel's might be enjoying Cam Newton a little too much right now to leave. That's also true. Yeah, that's very true. So. I mean, I mean, yeah. Like I guess I, I think the warrant, the, the firing is warranted. But I mean, do you think it really was that bad in Houston? I mean, he had Brock Osweiler, Tom Savage, uh, all these different quarterbacks, and he finally got his franchise quarterback, and he was still winning. I mean, four divisions out of six years. I don't know. I just can never get the offensive line right. Really, I, I, I would. It's funny, I'm, and I'm gonna bring this this up because I was talking to one of my buddies. Um, that's a Panthers fan. We were talking about how Mike Davis uh, had a great game. Panthers have won both games that Christian McCaffrey hasn't played in. Uh, the Panthers have gotten better every single week. And especially on offense, man, it all starts with the offensive line. If you have a great offensive line, it makes every single player on your offense better. Right. Running back, quarterback, everybody included. And I, I agree for trading players and some sorts, but you know, once you're getting that franchise quarterback – um, and those players to put around him. I mean, the reason DeAndre Hopkins worked is because, yeah, Deshaun Watson was getting hit a lot, but he could toss it up the nuke, and he was going to catch it 90% of the time. Right. And now it just doesn't have that. Um, that That's really the only hole, man. That offensive line, It if that is the only thing you're missing, it is a very, very critical thing to be missing. Here's the thing with Bill O'Brien. So, one, let's go ahead and, and and let's give him a little bit of slack here. He's fifty two and forty eight as a coach. He's zero and four this season, so you can take those four away. Fifty two and forty four. For me, it's not necessarily the the record or even the moves. Because honestly, when you're a GM and you're making trades, like you're you're trying to trade for what comes next, and it's honestly always a guessing game, right? Like you you when you trade, you know, Bill Belichick. We talked about uh, Chandler Jones. You trade Chandler Jones because you think, all right, he's on the downslope. You don't expect him to go get 20 sacks, right? <laughs> you're, you're guessing. Um, so I'm not even, you know, we're, we're going to take the the Hopkins not getting a first and that stuff to the side. There's a couple things here where it's like, all right, maybe the firing was warranted. Maybe the timing wasn't great. It's a pandemic. You know, it's only four games. You know, I just like everybody else, I had them going 0-4 to start the season. So it's not like this should be a surprise. <laughs> 
But here's where you start wondering, like, all right, like, is he really the right guy? Um, you mentioned the quarterbacks, and it all the way until Watson, you're talking Tom Savage, you're talking Brock Osweiler, you're talking, uh, you know, whoever. Basically, since Matt Schaub, there's been no consistency in Houston, yep. right? He gets to Sean Watson, who we can all agree is a step better than all of these quarterbacks. Is that fair? Just, mm-hmm. just a step. <laughs> However, Houston is not a step better than they were with any of those other quarterbacks. So there's no progress. So it's like when if you if if the if the brass, the front office believes that Deshaun Watson is that guy, which I believe he's that guy, if they believe he's that guy, they believe there should be some sort of improvement. And Houston's doing the same things with Deshaun Watson they were doing with Tom Savage or whoever else. And that's where it's like, all right, so you're not progressing, Bill O'Brien. You know, you can make all these moves. It's whatever. It probably looked at this and they were like, you traded all these people for all this, whatever we got. Look, here's the other thing. We're out here to compete. You know, last year we made the playoffs and we were up, you know, 20, 24 points on Kansas City in the divisional round. Like we're here to try to win a Super Bowl, which means that, yeah, while most people had them going 0 and 4, if I'm the owner, Bill, you want to make these moves. All right, that's fine. But when we have to go up against Kansas City, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, and Minnesota, I expect to win some games because I'm not expecting to go backwards. 0-4, do they go 0-4 in these four games last year? Who knows? But we know they went 0-4 this year, and they're looking like, all right, look at what we gave up. What is David Johnson doing for us? Like, why Why are we? Why is this the moves that we're making? And, we, and it doesn't feel like we're going forward. It feels like all we're doing is staying the same. I've said this about um, – says about Jason Garrett when he got fired. I've said this about uh, a couple other coaches in the NBA. Once you realize the ceiling that you've hit, the end goal is the Super Bowl or NBA Finals Championship or, you know, Stanley Cup. We can go on and on. The end goal is championship. If we realize that we've capped out with whatever coach this is at whatever point and it's not championship, you have to move on because the next guy, you don't know if that next guy can get you, you know, to that championship or not, but you do know the guy you have won't get you to your end goal. And so I do think that, like I said, like you said, I don't know if the timing was necessarily perfect. You probably could let him finish the season, especially like I said, it's a pandemic. What's this man about to go do? Right. <laughs> he needs to go like this, like it's a big deal. But I do think that like, I feel like the firing, this just tells me it was probably coming for a while. And they said, look, Bill, you, you got to do something because, I mean, we're not getting farther than what we want to get. And when you start 0-4 and, and now it's looking bleak and none of these moves look like they're paying off, it's like, I mean, look, man, we got to go. And they're probably now, it's like, we're going to spend this next year. We'll be trash, whatever. Maybe we won't. And we're going to go figure out what coaches we want, figure out what GMs we want so that the, the front office, the ownership, has a long enough time to really like do this process well, not a couple months. I so think I, I think there's one coach, there's one guy that they need, and I'm gonna be a little upset if Deshaun Watson gets anybody else but Eric Bieniemy. I'm, I'm I'm gonna be 100 percent honest. I think he deserves that coaching job really, really badly, and the offensive potential that him and Deshaun Watson could have. I mean, look at him and Mahomes right now. I just I I think he's perfect. I say this. All right. So we don't know how long Andy Reid has left to be a coach. Yes. If you're if you're Eric Enemy, I'm not going nowhere. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I really, I really really be like, hey, Andy, like, how long you got? (laughs) (laughs) Because if you talk about two years, I can wait. Like I got my homes to team. But you also, but you also got to look at Andy Reid too. I mean, he's looking at it now. He has. What everybody's calling next coming of Brady, Christ, whatever you want to say, <laughs> and Patrick Mahomes. I mean, Lord, like, why would Andy Reid want to leave at this point? Just won a Super Bowl. That's true. And with many more. Well, I don't want to say many more. I'm not trying to pull a LeBron here, but not one. <laughs> not, <laughs> anyway, I, I just I don't know why Andy Reid would leave anytime soon either. Now that they've got Mahomes locked up, because they're going to be perennials. But you know what they say about head coaching jobs, like head coaches are hired to be fired, right? Like that's why guys like Nick Saban, uh, they're stupid if they decide to leave Alabama, leave a perfect situation to go 
to just get in a bad situation to two years later. You know, coaches were looking for teams were looking for head coaches. Out, Houston's a very different situation, but you know, you're talking like teams like the Jets looking for a head coach. Yeah. Like you bad, like it's like if I'm Eric Bieniemy, I'm like, look, Andy, you got Mahomes here for 12 years. I doubt you're going to be here for 12 years. I'm supposed to go to Houston, and now I got to go up against y'all all the time when I can just stay here. And then what happens when he gets fired? Now he's got to, he's almost got to start over from square not from square one. Someone's going to give him a quarter yeah. job, but but yeah. like okay, this this brings up Kev. I've been meaning to talk to you about this, man. He was talking about them having to go up against each other, Deshaun Watson, Patrick Mahomes. Do you think that Watson is going to be like the Philip Rivers to Mahomes' Tom Brady? Maybe a Peyton Manning? Maybe he actually gets one. How, how do you feel about that relationship? I mean, he's 0-4 now, just coming off of uh, a big lead against the defending Super Bowl champs now. Um, abs- God, I still cannot believe to this day that they choked that lead. Um, now that they're 0-4, they're going to have to find a new coach. He's got to have more weapons now that DeAndre Hopkins is gone. Like, What's the timeline for him getting back to compete with Mahomes realistically? Uh well it's gonna be hard because like this is the reason why they even had to trade D Hop. Like we cannot afford a twenty million dollar left tackle, Tunsil. We cannot mm-hmm. cannot afford Watson getting forty million. Then we, we also cannot afford to bump up DeAndre Hopkins contract. Like he's he had, he had one of the worst contracts in the league based off market value when you got Diz getting sixteen, Thielen got yeah. sixteen. Then let's go on Cooper getting hundred five hundred million this past season. And he was making thirteen million. So D Hop, you like, oh no, nah, this ain't <laughs> this ain't it, right? But and it, it, there's no way you can pay three guys eighty million dollars total combined on one side of the ball. I think that's going to be enough to beat a Chiefs team who has a printing press in Kansas City because I don't know how they can keep everybody they have. It, but yeah, but that's <laughs> another question. That that's got to come back to bite them in the butt eventually, right? Uh, it, it should, but they, like for right now, the way they work their money, like Sammy come off the book soon. Uh, I know they, even Mahomes' contract is at least semi flexible. Yeah, I mean they did a good job. Who like whoever's in charge over there? I, I, I forgot the GM's name, but the cap guy, he's a guru, got to be because the way he worked his numbers to keep everybody. But I don't know. I think I think Pat Pat Mahomes is probably going to sweep the two AFC North guy. I mean AFC guys, and that's Lamar and and Watson. Like I don't I don't. I think he's going to be in the way. I don't think it'd be a Peyton Manning versus versus Brady thing. And that's the crazy part. People are trying to figure out, all right, who's going to be Tom Brady of this? Who's going to be Manning? Who's going to be Roethlisberger? Who's going to be Rivers? Mahomes, like, all of them. Mahomes is like, <laughs> yeah. this is going to be like, I don't think that there'll ever be anyone who's like going to be able to like go toe to toe and it be a toss up who's going to win that game. Like right now, I guess you give it Baltimore. But the second Lamar gets paid, all of that falls, yep. all of that, um, you know, and that's a perfect example. Like who, it, it, when Bill O'Brien got fired, uh, De- uh, DeAndre Hopkins' agent should have got fired too for that contract because that's why they were in this predicament in the first place because there's no way he should have been only getting paid what he was getting paid. But that's on him. That's who he hired. And you got a, a Houston defense who, like, who do they have on that defense outside of J.J. Watt? That's it was always hurt. Anybody. JJ Watt and Always Cun- Cunningham pretty is solid and nice little linebacker. I mean, solid. bad clowny yeah. at one point couldn't stay healthy either. Wasn't really producing mm-hmm. for yeah. former number one pick. The corners mean, got old. Yeah, Jonathan yes. Joseph, like they were good when it when when they were good. They had Tyron Matthew for a stretch. So now he's balling in Kansas City. It's the timing. Ta- timing is so timing is so crazy in sports. Yeah, like if they had Watson when they had the Savages. That's yes. a different story. Yep. And then you lose all those guys, and you hoping why is Watson a bus, and it's not working. So, nope. well, let's move on to something else, Kev. What you got for us to talk about, man? So, I really want to talk about, you know, COVID and how it's affecting like football, because you look over here and you look at all right this week. What do we have? We had Tennessee that whole outbreak thing, and they end up changing bye week. So Pittsburgh and Tennessee play another day. You got Pittsburgh, who's like dang, like we got to play, what is it, 13 straight weeks or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's almost like the New England Patriots got punished for containing COVID because only one player got it. Of course, it was Cam Newton. Of all the players, it had to be him, right? Yeah. While the Titans almost got rewarded for having an outbreak, you're almost better off having an outbreak because your game's going to get rescheduled. 
as opposed to New England, who now has to go into a game without their number one quarterback, or if it was a team with a receiver. And it's like, how crazy is that, that doing it the right way hurts you? Wow. Mm -hmm. A team who's like, didn't contain it the right way. Benefit. It's almost like, yo, if we're going to get COVID y'all, we just all need to get it. Cause that, cause they're not just going to give us a loss, right? If, if, if Tennessee was given a loss because somewhere along the line, they weren't as careful as the team they played against. Then it's like, all right, that makes sense. And Cam, but, and despite what anybody says, man, Cam makes a difference against Kansas City. Absolutely. And that is no. Absolutely. Once he once he didn't play, I was like, "There's no way I'm watching this game." Like, yeah, like, I, I didn't yeah. even turn it on. I was excited as heck to watch that game too with Pat Mahomes, Cam, something to prove. Everybody saying Kansas City gonna win. Uh it was it was getting ready to be written in the history books, man. What do y'all think about this conspiracy theory? That bit, like, all right, so y- y'all telling me these guys practice all week. Cam was the quarterback, and he's talking to everybody because he is the guy in the middle of the huddle, talking, spreading the most germs to everybody. Nobody else got it but him. And y'all mm-hmm. telling y'all telling me it only happened when he played Kansas City. Bill Belichick, it might be a genius. I'm not going. I'm not going to show y'all Cam Newton against y'all. Y'all going to have to wait to the playoffs. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I didn't even. Know, I, you, you know, Kev, what, you might kind be of, onto something. What kind of conspiracy? Oh, yeah, y'all, y'all think, I mean, because y'all, 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 y'all know like these. You know, oh, that, people, that people say things. Much. People say things be fixed all the time, but it's like Bill Belichick be doing some like chess move things before. Like we know he does. Have no things. idea, and you'd be like, y'all not, y'all not, y'all, 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 y'all about to get Brian Hoyer. Cause think about it. Right, so the the way the Chiefs and Patriots going have gone every time they play each other, they play through three years in a row. Mahomes struggle in the first half every time. Second half, go crazy. So, like, he probably showed something. And, like, well, I don't have the talent to compete. <laughs> in the so, I'm just going to stay in it. And, like, maybe Mahomes figured it out, got things clicking, and they scored a lot of second half points. But, like, when Cam's there, it's a whole different ball game. Whole different ball game. Because they let Damian Harris, who had – he got his first career hundred yard game last week. Imagine him back there with Cam. What you gonna do? Like that's what made Cam dangerous. Is that that part? Like, oh, I got, I got to stop him. Damn, yeah, Cam him. plays eleven on eleven football. Too. Like he yeah. runs the ball and it's eleven on eleven, not ten on eleven because you know quarterback hands if it off. Don't account for him. He's gonna beat you. Right. So that's like, wild. Yeah. I don't. That's cr- I. I just I can't wrap my mind around Bill Belichick being that smart. He's like, yo, Cam. There's nobody else got nobody else got COVID, bro. Nobody Wait. else. Okay, so listen. now, Kev, you got my mind racing because that is you might you really might be on to something. Nope. I just on Tennessee had one, two, three, four. You know, the number kept coming every single day and passed. And I, else. I kept waiting after Cam got it. I kept waiting to hear like, okay, somebody well, else gonna right. have it. And Bill Belichick talks all the time about how much Cam is in their facility too. First one in, last one out. He talks to everybody, players and personnel, all the time because that's who Cam is. That's what he was in Carolina, and he's the only one that got it. Yeah, that really don't hashtag, make a lot of sense. Hashtag, hashtag COVID gate. Of course, said Preach. <laughs> oh man, I, I'm gonna have to keep this in mind if if COVID they gate. if they end up playing uh, later in the playoffs because if they got something special that they're saving because if you're gonna play Kansas City, Bill Belichick knows he's gonna have to pull out something special. Because yeah. of how good Mahomes is, right? And you, you got you got to think about like it. It just Bill Bill know he's a little shorthanded on defense. Got a lot of guys stayed out, um, but it's like all right. So uh, Kukori said Cam is uh, is amazing. So I mean, I, I guess I guess it makes sense. Well, what about get it? But. Being asymptomatic just means you don't have symptoms. That doesn't mean you can't spread it. That's not that's not really. But still, regardless. It, you in the you in the huddle. Nobody else get it but him. First off, it is great, fishy. Great Instagram picture he put. He posted. You know, I Cam being Cam. I thought it <laughs> but, was Rosa Parks at first. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, though. The only reason why I would be like iffy to say that, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, man. I'm gonna, y'all get, I'm gonna let y'all get this again. Hey, are you oh. gonna play? Are you gonna play this weekend, Cam? No. Shout out to Rosa. <laughs> All right, I went too far. Go ahead. You, um, oh, you you saw a couple weeks ago in college football, Florida State played against uh, Miami, and um, 
Florida State, the only person that got COVID was the head coach, right? And of course, of all people, the one person who's going to be around everybody is the head coach. So you've seen it be possible. And people were like, all right, hold on now. Everybody, I mean, the head coach is the only one, no other coaches, no players, no nothing. So that's that's where you're it's like, possible. Uh, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, of course. But I wonder if there were better alternatives. Maybe you make multiple buys for each team, right? Or maybe you give before the playoffs start, you give maybe two weeks of Your just like period. to give yeah. make up games, um, to make sure people are quarantined, set up some type of bubble situation. I don't know. Give yourself so that when these things come up, you can push it back and you have places to put them. Um you know, scrambling around like Tennessee and Pittsburgh were the only guys that were affected. You know, somebody else's game got moved against Pittsburgh from some other time. Like things are just right. other teams are being affected as well. Um, I saw you, Kev, on on two on whatever day it was. You said maybe they should have a bye week every four weeks. Yeah. So that they could do this kind of thing. Like maybe there were better alternatives than just saying, you know what, let's just let's just go straight through it like normal. I, I think the date of the Super Bowl is really the fact that it's so set in stone and hard to move, I think that's what's hurting them a lot. Because from the start of all of this, they were having issues just pushing it back a week or two for that same reason, you know, to help prevent issues and, and things like that. Um, I don't know. It really is a good idea. They need it for sure because there's no way this is the only time this is going to happen this season. Right. Yeah. I mean – like I mean, I said what we so basically what week five would be. This would be like everybody's bot. Like I mean, because you got to think, the NBA is is easy to pick up basketball, easy to play baseball, but just let's just go out there, guys. But football, you can't just say, oh y'all gonna play Monday and y'all gonna oh we do it now Monday and Thursday. So what are they gonna start doing two Thursday night games? Like they might have to because it's gonna be hard to. It's going, to, it's going to be hard to do, do this kind of stuff if a team get moved back because there's only so many things you can change. They're and not super flexible with these game dates, man. No, nah, not um, at all. You know, but the bubble idea in the playoffs, that definitely something should happen. I think they should just play in the, in the two newest stadiums. AFC play in, in L.A. at the Chargers in Ram Stadium and then NFC play in the Vegas Stadium. I think, you know what I'm saying? Because like, that way – Chargers probably not making the playoffs, and the Raiders probably not making the playoffs. So or, that is, <laughs> or if they're nervous because it's Vegas, even – I mean, Minnesota and U.S. We, Bank. Right, we we on three. We probably making either. So. Look, y'all, know three, good, so. y'all know good and well that Jerry Jones got no problem opening Jerry World. So like people That's true. Play all over there in Jerry World. You know how he is. Because y'all, y'all ain't making it either. Cow- Cow- not making it either. <laughs> so all the new stadiums, Atlanta, <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia, <laughs> it's right there too. They're not making it either. So all the new, five new stadiums are open. Playoff time, so we we they can do that. I mean, that's the only way though, because it is hard to to chat like hold you know fifty three players accountable plus the practice squad guys plus the coaches to go home and not get it and not bring it inside. So, I mean, I know they got good protocols stuff like that. So it, you you're right, kid. I mean, it's 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 they should have thought about it more as far as like having alternate routes because, like you said, Tennessee get the game pushed back, but. The Patriots lose Cam Newton, and then like, okay, that's that's really the only hope. Nobody believes in yeah. Brian Hoyer, and he got benched and stood him. And, I mean, he ain't do nothing either. So yeah, yeah. he threw two know. picks in a quarter. Like, come on now, he's trying. Yeah, hey, look, I'm trying to make a play, but nevertheless, I just feel <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, you know, like the more you talk about it, yeah, COVID gate. I'm gonna go. Ahead. We're gonna start the hashtag COVID, COVID yeah. gate. <laughs> clip, All, right, clip well, <laughs> All right, well, what you got for us, man? All right, man, I want to talk about the NFC South and how a not-so-bright future for the Carolina Panthers this offseason is now looking pretty pretty darn good, man. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. So the NFC South and the way things have gone this year, um, the Buccaneers have scrapped by, you know, in a couple of their games, I think they easily could have lost to the Chargers. There was one point last weekend where I thought the Panthers were going to get a game on both of them because I thought the Saints and the Bucks were both going to lose. Um, at about two o'clock Sunday afternoon, it looked like they were going to. But <laughs> yeah. um, if you look at both of those teams, the Falcons too, they all, all three of them, three Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Say what you want about Matt Ryan, he's an MVP, been to a Super Bowl, choked a Super Bowl, still should be in the Hall of Fame, even though I don't like him very much. Uh, those guys are going to lead the NFL soon. Now you got the Panthers, who Teddy is not so young, still twenty seven. But the rest of the team, for the most part, is you just spent seven draft picks straight on all defense. Uh, now you got another year where 
my prediction of them winning seven more games is starting to look pretty good. They've gotten better every single week. They've gotten a jump start on this rebuild. They moved on from Cam. I'm going to miss the guy. I love that he's doing well in New England. But once these other teams, once the Saints fall off, even if Jameis takes over, it's not going to be Drew Brees. He's a Hall of Fame quarterback. Same with the other three. Once Brady leaves Tampa Bay, I think they're right back where they started, uh, just without another quarterback. And Atlanta, once Matt Ryan and Julio were gone, what do they have? <laughs> I mean, honestly, um, I don't know. I, I think the Panthers position themselves very, very nicely to be – uh, back at the top of this division pretty soon. So I'm, I'm having a little trouble because I'm very disappointed in Carolina winning games that I didn't <laughs> have them winning because I took the under just because of the Matt Rule situation. When he mm-hmm. moved the Temple, they were sorry we year one by that because he built up. He's a he's a great builder. Yep. They got they got right. He go to Baylor. They sorry, build it, get right. So I'm going with I'm going with history. History says my guy that he's going to build a team, seven rookie, seven draft picks of rookies playing a lot. Let's be sorry, year one. Listen, Panthers fans too, man. When they drafted Derrick Brown at number seven instead of Isaiah Simmons, everybody was all pissed off. No. Let me tell you, through these first four weeks, Jeremy Chin, their third round pick, has I think 22 more total tackles than Isaiah Simmons does. I think Isaiah Simmons has like five or six. Chen has 27, 28. He's been, I honestly, with since Luke Keekley's not there anymore, he's been the best player on our defense so far this year. He's played in 100% of every defensive snap, I think, all four weeks so far. It's It's been ridiculous. I don't know. I didn't know why Carolina Panthers fans want another. I mean, yeah, he's very versatile, of course, but – you want you want pass versus to get the quarterback, and the best way for them to go free is to have somebody in the middle who's getting double teamed. Like that's that's what you want. So Derrick Brown and then Kwan short next to him, like and Brian Burns too has been outstanding. Yeah, this, it's, 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 I think the draft pick was correct. Like so, I'm I'm looking at how I had the season going. Right, so I actually had y'all beating the Raiders week one. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I also have Raiders under. Close so I, we could easily be four and zero right now, man. I, I, <laughs> just as easy to be four and zero right now. I, said, I also had the Raiders under, so I had to I had to get Carolina to win that one, right? So I had you lose in Tampa, the Chargers, because I thought on the road, LA, yeah. which the Chargers really, to me, I think the Chargers really played a better game. I mean, you got like a, a lot of field goals, like Chargers. Come on, I mean, granted, the, the, the five field goals in the red zone, it was ridiculous, right? So, but you got to think, Keenan Allen and Eckler almost made that miracle happen, dude. So I, you know, <laughs> that, that, that almost happened. Um, and I, you know, I was a big believer in Arizona Cardinals, so I had to lose that one. And then coming to this next game, week five, I thought it was a toss up between Atlanta and Carolina, who can win. Atlanta playing real bad right now, so I'm really, I'm really upset now because <laughs> I know, Atlanta, I know you're going to be have three wins now, and the, the over was you can't you got you, you got to go six and ten, and I lose. So I'm like, man, this I'm, I'm looking down, like, man, I lost. I'm, I'm feeling good about all the bold <laughs> statements I made about the Panthers. In yeah, the, in I mean, the preseason. I mean, you got Atlanta this week, probably a win. You got a reliever, a relief pitcher starting in Chicago. So that's yeah. gonna be that's gonna be a win. I like I don't see I either care like win that game too. Sorry, I man. I, I just I lost my bet already. I talk I too just, much Carolina sports, man. That's me. You know, you know I gotta bring it up in some shape or form. Yeah, I, I mean yeah. I, I see Denver injured. The team in Washington got nothing. I mean, hopefully Alex Smith playing by then. That's my only hope for that win. I, don't know. I said I just, the same thing about Washington last year, and they ran for like a thousand yards on us with Adrian Peterson and Darius Geis. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I, it's no, it's it's um, it it's it just a lot of a lot, a lot of different you know games. I I knew Carolina would be a pain in the ass, like all because because you got to think Matt Rule what he brings to the table and this Joe Brady offense looking pretty good. Like I got Mike Davis in fantasy. So I mean, you know, I'm good. The waiver <laughs> wire in fantasy too, man. Right. So, clutch. so you know, the, the Panthers are are really impressive. But I, I I thought this would be a season where you compete, but you don't pull it out. Yet you're beating the Chargers, you're beating the Cardinals, um, and then you got these other games where, like, I thought like Carolina couldn't stand a chance, like the Denver or, or, or Atlanta, and now four games in, I'm like, nah, like it's crazy how much <laughs> things have changed just in four weeks, honestly. Right. I Carolina, I like the progress, but we have to remember like teams will resort to the mean when it's all said and done. Right. So like you gotta think about Arizona who started two and oh and everybody was like Whoa. Whoa. 
Kyle oh, Murray yeah. MVP race. Like, and what have they done the last two weeks? They resorted right back to the mean. Now they're two and two. And I don't even know who they play this week, but I was like, no, they play the Jets, but like they mess around and lay an three, egg. Three right? two. And you let the Jets. I know, but it don't, matter, it don't matter how many leg, <laughs> eggs they lay. Three and two. <laughs> um, but they're resorting back to the mean, right? So you've got Carolina, who you know showed some so some good things, but the Chargers decided to wait and turn it on late. And just like we said, a simple yeah. pitch yeah. away from a win, but he it should never got to that. I, th- I think yeah. that Carolina. Was played better. like the better team until yeah. the last quarter and a half. They just didn't score. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, you got Atlanta coming up. This going to be. A, uh, I think Atlanta's going to score points game. on our defense. I mean, the, Matt Ryan's going to score points against us. Uh, the defense, like I said, has gotten better. So I'm interested to see what they do. Gross Matos even looked great last week. Yeah. Burns has one of the highest pass rush win weight win rates in the NFL right now. Uh, it's looking good, man. I, I'm I'm very, very happy holding true to my preseason predictions that everybody called me crazy for. So. I do want to say this, though. You said Atlanta, outside of Matt Ryan and Julio, who do they got? Right. I, hope that, I hope that Calvin Ridley's the answer because I have him <laughs> on my fantasy, fantasy football team. My man, he had, zero, he had oh. zero catches, zero yards. And I was like, did he get hurt? No. He played the whole game. Hey. It was Cat. So Calvin I need, Ridley I need is very, very right. streaky. Seat Lock. belt, <laughs> seat J. belt. Alexander, Lock. like that's a, you know, I, wow. you know, the NFC South, you know, yeah, we we know about the Brady, Brady not gonna last maybe two years probably. Breeze, I think is already done, but um, and and, and the the Falcons, as long as Dan Quinn stay there, they're gonna be sorry. So, <laughs> I mean, I was gonna say that. I'm glad you said it for me. Yeah, um, I'm gonna say that. I'm saying it every week till you get out of here, and I like. <laughs> And like if he loses a week, if he, like I I know Carolina two and two, but if Arthur Blank does not realize like okay this is the time, like let's go ahead and get him out of here, like you can't you can't lose other games and in, in in a lead having the lead and lose it, then you play Carolina team who's younger than you and you can't, you know that's just and I don't understand how is Bill O'Brien the first one to go like Adam Gay should have been gone like yeah no Dan should have been that. gone I don't understand how Bill hey, O'Brien full, full circle right it's just like, like, <laughs> wild yep full circle bring it back to Bill O'Brien how the heck is he the first one to go I, like hey, you'd have thought all right hey look we're gonna take GM duties away from you first before you just that's what they should have done no joke. Should, like, GM take GM the rest of the season away. I don't think some people realize how much stress that is to be a GM and a head coach of a franchise. It's hard. I can't even imagine that. I mean, you know, you you, you do have the help, you know, from other guys, but oh yeah, but but you know how hard it is to like (laughs) how hard is it to draft a guy and be like, damn, he not it. (laughs) 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 I got play him. (laughs) That's so hard. But you got to deal with both sides of the coin because a lot of coaches, whether they ever admit it or not, just kind of, you know, half ass blame their GMs for their failures. But when you're in that situation, you you can't really do that. So yeah, you gotta hope you can everything wrong that happens, everybody blames Bill O'Brien. Oh, you didn't draft well, your fault. Can't yep. coach well, your fault. <laughs> he got no scapegoat. <laughs> it's all him. <laughs> he got about to fall back on. Can't blame the owner no more. He died. You know, I mean, RIP. <laughs> you can't blame anything because that's that's who gave him the job. Yeah, personally. I mean, and as a son, you be like, all right. I don't know what my dad was tripping on that one. So sorry, Bill. You got to get out of here. But I mean, that yeah, you're right, kid. I, I thought I thought if they lost to the Broncos without their starting quarterback, first year guy. With all the injuries they have, he he was out of there Friday morning. Cause that's usually what happens. Like that Thursday game, the, the course mm-hmm. get fired. You got what a week and a almost a week and a half to get ready for the next game with with a new guy who's running the show. I mean, that, that was the perfect time to do it. So Adam Gay should be gone. Patricia should be out of there, and Dan Quinn should have all been fired before. Oh, and, and the Falcons got a playoffs coming off a short week too. So there's also that. Yeah, so that's that's three coaches that should be out of here. Yeah, that's I, the Jets are fired against the bye week. The bye week will be when it gets fired. Like, all right, we lost. We 0-10. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get them out of here now. <laughs> and, and then they're going to win, right, because the schedule is going to – they're going to play like Miami or something. Yo, they're that's actually win. crazy. Like, that's, <laughs> they're not being – like, that's crazy. You say 0-10. I'm looking at the schedule. I'm like, all right, 
They, they lose to Arizona probably, lose the Chargers, probably lose to Buffalo, lose to Kansas City, lose to New England, play at Miami. Everybody lose. Everybody plays bad in Miami. I thought Russ was yeah. Russ was going to cook, and he, you know, he just a little yeah. appetizer. Like, he ain't even getting no full-course meal down there. And they got Miami after the bye again. So if, they, if you lose a Miami bad, I was fire him, let another guy get a chance to beat Miami. Like, that's what you should do. Yeah, you're right. And then you know it never goes the same way the next time you play him. So I'm telling you, they're going to lose to Miami, be 0-10 or 0-whatever, 0-11. He's out of here. New coach going to come in and win. They got new life. Everybody, ah, rah, rah. Like, we got to win. We're not going 0-16 like the Lions. And then they'll they'll go 1-15. But they (laughs) they got the win. Like, that's what's going to happen. They'll get a new coach. And they'll probably, you know, they'll probably go get Bill O'Brien because they like to take fired coaches. And higher, <laughs> like so, so they'll, they'll go get Bill O'Brien. That's where he'll be. And that, that, that really, the Jets had really have no options. Like, <laughs> I would like, I don't think, I don't think a veteran coach would even put himself in that situation. Like, you have, you have to be a young guy who it's like a no win situation right now. Um, Bill York. O'Brien would have to say, "Look, I got to be GM too because I need, I need to. <laughs> that's how you, that's how you finagle back <laughs> to GM that's right that's coach. That's you do it because that's how you do it." <laughs> Cause yeah, I'm not taking that job. I don't care. You got to pay me more than that. Like, cause you, you oh, talk about if it, it, Bill O'Brien a 500 record, right? About right above 500. He goes to the Jets in year one. He's below 500. 400. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I, I don't I don't understand what's going on there in New York. But a lot of happened in four weeks. Like Owen said, man, it's crazy how like teams was riding high going into the season, and now four weeks later, you're talking about. For hot seats being real hot, and you know, I, I did not, I did not expect you know the Packers to have the number one offense. The, okay, the number one meaningful offense, because uh, you know your Cowboys be putting up that Dak on pace for like seven thousand passing yards. Christ, yeah, just... <laughs> hey, it's smart. They gonna be all... this is a joke, they, man. They, they're not, they're not gonna pay Dak, but they're gonna use all his arms this year. All of it. Well, I just don't understand how you bring in Mike Nolan his last three years doing any type of coaching. He was coaching the Falcons, and they were 24th in defensive yards, 27th, and then 32nd. And we thought bringing Mike Nolan in, we were going to stop somebody. But I digress. That's I'll save the that's rest another, of that. Another time. That's, that's, for, that's, week, that's for after the second <laughs> quarter of the season, after week eight. <laughs> I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that for the podcast. Uh, I'm going live tomorrow, so I'm going to save that for then. Everybody can hear what I got to say. Is it is it time to go watch the finals? I guess I guess yeah. it's that time. Before we get out of here, Kev, go and shut your, your, your stuff out, and then Owen, you follow behind him. Yeah, y'all, uh, it's the bottom line. That's the name of the podcast, Kevo at The Real Kevo. That's me. Uh, check me out. I'm every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. I didn't go live tonight. I will do it tomorrow, but it's Tuesday night, 7 to 8 on Sportscaster. If you miss any of it, go check out the podcast wherever you get your podcast. It is the bottom line, home of the best in sports talk content. Hope to see you all there. You guys know where I'm at, man. I'm on this show enough. At the QC Collective on Twitter, I talk about Charlotte sports too much, even though they make me sad. Come talk with me, man. All right. Preach, Gary, preach. The prophets. Yeah.